Coming from a family with a robust history of mental illness, I appreciate the daunting task of addressing a story where the protagonist suffers from severe bipolar disorder, and even more so appreciate when a musical and the company producing it successfully captures much of what having those mental illnesses can be like on the individual and their family. Welcome to episode 60 of One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater across Connecticut and New York. Today I am reviewing the Westport Country Playhouse production of Tom Kitt and Brian Yorkie's musical Next to Normal, directed and choreographed by Marco Santana, running through April 24th at their theater at 25 Powers Court in Westport, Connecticut. Mental illness is a sensitive subject, so I will prelude this review with this. My feelings and opinions towards Next to Normal are immediately connected to personal experiences with multiple family members and friends who suffer from some degree of bipolar disorder, manic depression, suicidal tendencies, body mutilation, and so forth. Everyone's experience with people who suffer from these horrible ailments is different, and my point of view is my own and not intended to be offensive to anyone else's opinions on the issue if they are contrary to my own. I am not a doctor, and I don't claim any experience outside of first-hand and second-hand experience. First, I love this musical. I think it's incredibly daring and courageous for the creative team to tackle such a heady and difficult subject, and they do a great job of describing a family collapsing and falling apart amidst its own suffering. What they get right hits incredibly close to home for me. Diana, radiantly played by Dar Lee Ah, is suffering from severe bipolar disorder and along with the disorder is being haunted by the specter of her dead son, Gabe, also excellently performed by Daniel J. Maldonado, who died when he was an infant. It's been 17 long, hard years for Diana and her long-suffering yet eternally patient husband, Dan, played by Wilson Germain Heredia. Diana's symptoms become worse and goes on a series of cocktails of medications prescribed to her by her doctor, played by Kate Thompson. What follows is a downward spiral as Diana refuses to comply with treatments until she, at the end of the first act, is given the option of ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. Meanwhile, her daughter, Natalie, played by Ashley Lalonde, is suffering her own depression as her parents don't pay any attention to her, gets high with her new boyfriend, Henry, played by Gian Perez, and steals her mom's medication. Westport's production is spot on in depicting the strife that comes to a family when they're at their wit's end. I've seen people who have had to go through trial after trial of medications, the lows and highs and emotional sterility that comes through those various concoctions, and under the expert hand of Santana, the cast overall realizes his vision to perfection. I would have liked a little more anger and frustration on Wilson Hermain Heredia's part, but Dan is a fairly thankless role anyway, as he has his own secrets that are held much closer to the best than any other character, so I'm not too displeased. I'd rather have Dan be overly gracious than overly spiteful, so it's the lesser of two evils when it comes to not having the right balance I would like for the character. I can go on and on about how great the cast is as a whole, but I want to give due diligence to Darlie Sia. She was marvelous. The degrees of elation, depression, the sorrow, the hope. She captures all of Diana through and through without breaking a beat of her acting in any of her flawless singing of Kit's soaring score. The same is true for Lalonde, who nails the actions of a teen who feels lost and alone, knowing that her dead brother is more alive to her mother than she is. Maldonado is downright frightening at times as Gabe, which is a revelatory interpretation of the role for me, as I always envisioned him, or at least have seen him interpreted, as more of a spirit calling out to Diana for affection as opposed to something more malevolent, which I like. Corey Paddock does a fantastic job with the lighting design. I love the use of shadow and textures of darker colors to create the haunted elements of the piece. Even the white, marbled kitchen holds an ominous tone to it. People are going to have different opinions as to whether or not the strip lights running atop the set that give 
EKG readings at one point work, but for me, I really like it. It was inventive and clever. Westport Country Playhouse's production of Next to Normal is professional regional theater at its best. It's a haunting, moving shock to the system that should inspire and challenge audiences. But that is only one man's opinion of Next to Normal at Westport Country Playhouse. If you want tickets, I'll leave a link to their website where you can order them. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get alerts to future reviews. My next review will be Iris and Playhouse's world premiere of the new musical Star of Freedom. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the theater. Mm -hmm.